Hello and welcome to today's lesson on line spectra, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to try and understand how line spectra form. So if we are successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should demonstrate how line spectra implies discrete energy levels in atoms. We should be able to calculate the frequencies of emitted photons using energies associated with different discrete energy levels, and finally explain why atoms emit characteristics characteristic line spectra, which links into the following part of the AQA uh, A-level specification, 3.2.2.3 energy levels in photon emission. Now previously what we have learned is that when visible light is passed through a prism it disperses into different colours of the spectrum. Now we call this the continuous spectrum as there's no break in the spectrum. Now it's important to note that a curious effect takes place when a cold gas is placed in between the visible light source and the prism because what happens is lines of the spectrum disappear and we call this idea an absorption line spectrum. Now this this effect occurs because the cold gas in between the light source and the prism and the eye uh, is absorbing some of the energy from that light source. Now again another curious effect was noticed when visible light from a hot gas was placed through a prism because what we had in this instance is that lines of spectrum appeared so we had an emission line spectrum. Now this occurred as the hot gas was emitting only certain frequencies of energy so you had different spectra the continuous spectra, the emission spectra and the absorption spectra. Now now the emission and absorption spectra of the same gas were found to be opposites of each other. So for the same gas where you had a black line in the absorption spectrum, you had a coloured line in the emission spectrum and vice versa. So physicists try to understand the physics behind the different spectra that we find. Now we know today that line spectra provide evidence for transitions between the discrete energy levels in atoms. Now the line spectra of elements can only exist if the atoms exist with discrete energy levels. So we've got to examine how electrons behave when inside an atom. Now we've learned previously that when you have an energy in a, an electron in a high energy level you can get de-excitation. Now each possible de-excitation between energy levels in an atom corresponds to the emission of one particular frequency of a photon from the atomic structure. Now the frequency of the photon emitted is due to the energy difference between the energy levels that the electron de sites between. So we can work out the energy of the photon emitted by doing E2 minus E1 and therefore the frequency is therefore this value of E you've just calculated divided by H Planck's constant. Now this results in one line in an element's emission spectra. Now, for example, there are three lines in hydrogen spectrum shown here because there are three particular de-excitations that could take place. So the number of possible jumps between energy levels gives you the possible number of lines in a spectrum. So it's important to note that the emission spectrum is determined by the photons produced when de-excitation can occur in an atom. So if the emission spectra is unique for each element as each element have different energy levels and therefore energy level differences so this means they emit photons at different frequencies. Now similarly we can look at the idea of your absorption spectra or your and, and what happens in this case is that each possible excitation between energy levels an electron going from a low level to a higher level corresponds to the absorption of one particular frequency of photon into the atomic structure and it's the same equation previously which you can work out the frequency of of this particular photon. Now again when you have absorption taking place this results in one dark line in the spectrum as energy is being taken in by the atom. So in this particular example there can be three lines in hydrogen spectrum because it corresponds to the three jumps as the electrons moving up to higher energy levels. So the absorption spectrum is determined as the photons produced when the electron when the electrons excitation occurs in an atom and the emission spectrum once again is unique for elements as each element has different energy levels so different energy level differences which means they'll absorb photons at different frequencies. So the emission spectra and the absorption spectra are caused by the same phenomena excitation and de-excitation so this means that the spectra are opposites of each other. So emission spectra is caused by de-excitation and caused by atoms emitting photons whilst the absorption spectra is caused by excitation when atoms are 
absorb photons. So to clarify, your emission spectra is caused by de excitation and your absorption spectra is caused by excitation. But these spectras can only occur if excitation and de excitation occur. So what this means is quite simply, spectras are experimental proof for the particulate nature of light in addition to the photoelectric effect in addition to the ultraviolet catastrophe. So it's important you know how our, our spectra form either the absorption uh, spectra or the emission spectra. Now, just to clarify, just as an electron can drop between energy levels in an atom releasing a single photon, it can also jump up one or more energy levels if it absorbs a photon of the right energy. Now, only a single photon of the relevant energy can cause this, and it's not possible for an electron to store up energy from smaller quanta until it makes this result, this jump. So, as a result, this means that shining a continuous spectrum of light at a transparent material leads to only a couple of the frequencies of that radiation being absorbed, those which correspond to the exact energy level difference between the levels, whilst the rest would just go straight through and not be absorbed by the material. So this forms your absorption spectrum and can determine the element of a substance which we can match the absorption and emission spectrum to known samples. So because as the line spectra of each element is unique, due to the each element having different energy levels, you can identify which elements are present in the sample. So you'd excite a substance and then let the sample deal excite and you record its emission spectrum. You then compare the emission spectrum with known samples and you find the matching element from the matching sample. Now it's important to note it doesn't matter where the sample is excited, the line X spectra will always be the same. So we can determine the elements in stars like the Sun by observing its emission spectra and its absorption spectra and comparing it to known element line spectra produced in the labs. We can also determine the elements found in supernovae by observing absorbing their line spectra and comparing it to known element line spectra in the lab. Now, as, as we also know that for particular elements we have an idea of what their line spectra is, we can determine if an object is red shifting or blue shifting by comparing its line spectra to a sample line spectra produced in the lab. So comparing the line spectra of various stellar objects was the first experimental proof of the expansion of the universe. Now we tend to use the, um, the line spectra of hydrogen because hydrogen is the most common element in the universe, so it's a very useful reference marker. So we looked at the line spectra in this case, in the example on the screen, we looked at the absorption spectra of hydrogen. We looked at the lab, we looked at a nearby star, a nearby galaxy, a distant galaxy, and a very distant galaxy. It was noted that they all had the same pattern, so they must all be hydrogen. However, the pattern was shifted across the further away you were, which was the idea of redshift, that the line spectra itself was shifted to the red end of the spectra. Now, emission spectra show the wavelengths of the different photons emitted by the atom when the atom de-excites, and the absorption spectra shows the wavelengths of the different photons absorbed by atoms to excite the electron. So let's just consider excitation and de-excitation again. Previously we've said photons are discrete particles of light, so they are particles of energy, calculate the equation E equals HF. Now when electrons move down the different energy levels, they de-excite and release a photon of the corresponding energy level difference. So let's consider an atom with an excited electron in the fourth shell. Now this electron can de-excite to either the third, the second, or the ground state. So as a result, it will always tend to end up in the lower shell with the vacancy in it. Now let's just consider the transition from the fourth shell to the third shell. When the electron drops down the atom, it will release a particle of energy, a photon. And the energy of the photon is the difference between the two energy levels they transit between, in this case 4 eV. Now we can then work out the wavelength of this photon, because remember we can idea of a wave particle, so idea we can work out the wavelength of the photon by doing the equation lambda equals hc over e which comes from our previous equation e equals hf so as a result we can link this into c equals f lambda the wave equation and therefore we can work out what the wavelength of the photon released is so we can work out in this case it's 3.1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters now just remember in an examination question if you are asked to work out the wavelength of a photon you must convert the energy 
energy from EV, which is the most likely unit given in your line spectra or energy level spectra. Um, therefore, you convert them to joules to get the answer in meters. Now, just it doesn't have to just be from third, the fourth to the third shell. It could be the fourth to the second shell, the fourth to the first shell. So you've got to work out the possible photons that could be released if that an electron in the fourth shell de excites and you can work out the wavelength for each one so it's important to note that once you work out the wavelength for each one we can then uh, show the lines of radiation for the possible transitions in the atom so what we can then do is we can write down the different wavelengths which link to our different transitions so you've got four to three four to two and four to one now it's important to note that the bigger the transition the larger the energy of the photon produced Produced. Now remember, the photons in the same spectral line have the same fixed amount of energy unique to that line. Now you tend to find the higher energy photons to the right of the line spectra and you tend to find the low energy photons to the left of the spectra. Now it's the same for when photons are absorbed by an atom to excite the electrons. The different wavelengths of energy can be absorbed by the atom and we call that the absorption spectra. And the absorption spectra and the emission spectra of each element is unique so we can identify elements which will ensure the contents of. So just to clarify, the coloured lines on the emission spectra are the wavelengths of energy given out by an excited atom. The black lines on an absorption spectra are the wavelengths of energy taken in to excite the atom. Now we actually noted that sunlight has an identical spectrum to helium and this allowed us to work out that helium must be present in the sun. So again, we can actually work out the energy of the photon released when the electron either moves up the shells or down the shells by, um, well that's when it goes up the shells it's emitted when it is going down the shells okay you can work that by doing the difference in the energy level and you can then work out either the frequency or the wavelength with our equation e equals hc over lambda and you can rearrange it now it's important to note that like we said before the greater the energy level difference the shorter the wavelength and higher the frequency of the photon emitted or absorbed so this means the largest energy level differences in our atom produce the photons of the shortest wavelength length but also the highest frequency and this means the smaller the energy level difference the longer the wavelength and the lower the frequency of the photon emitted or absorbed so this means the smallest energy level difference in your atom uh, produces the photon of the longest wavelength and the shortest frequency so each colored line in a line spectra correspond to the wavelength emitted by a source the photons that are produced on each line have the same energy unique to the spectral line and each photon is emitted when an atom de excites. Now an atom will only emit particular wavelengths of radiation, the spectral lines, because the electrons in it can only emit photons with energy equal to the difference between two of its energy levels. Now no two elements produce the same pattern of wavelengths because the arrangement of energy levels in the atoms are unique to each element. Now an absorption spectra has black lines that arise from only particular wavelengths of light being absorbed by the source because the electron can only absorb photons photons with energy equal to the difference between the two levels. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? That the line spectra of any atom, such as atomic hydrogen, is evidence for the transition between discrete energy levels in atoms, where we know HF, the energy of the photon either absorbed or released, is equal to E1 minus E2, and you've got to be prepared to answer questions in either joules or EV. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to demonstrate how the the line spectra implies discrete energy levels in atoms. We can calculate the frequency of emitted photons using L energies associated with different discrete energy levels and we can explain why atoms emit characteristic line spectra. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on line spectra which is part of the particles and radiation topic in A-level air physics. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and have a lovely day.